Everybody is in fear, everybody is in a panic because we have been victimized. We have, no, have not known what is going to happen to us. We are suffering. Yeah, man, the wickedest fight Rasta get in Jamaica was through the car guard thing. What a war to bust a cabinet singing what a war. The what a war to bust a cabinet singing what a war. Blessed love family, so this morning I've come to sound off my sound. And you know, ever so often I have to come on my channel and I have to sound the alarm, you know, family. I am aware that some of you are English speakers. But this morning, this one called for Jamaican dialect. And this one called for me to reach out to my Jamaican people. So this is crunch time, family. And when it's crunch time, sometimes you have to go in some language where you know, say, your people have to know, say, I see you or something and you attack your talk. And this morning, me attack my talk, you know. This morning, me a sound off my sound. And... You know, on my channel, I don't discuss religion because, you see, religion, religion, as far as I am concerned, it come about and it was created by man to create nothing but division. You over that side say you are this, me say me are that, and right there so, that's division and segregation. We are already divided and we are already segregated. So I am not a part of no religion. So I want you to get a clear understanding of that when you come to my channel. You're also to know that I am not going to disrespect you because you're of a certain religion. If you come to challenge me, yes, I might have to get into some nitty gritty with you. But you know what? I try my best not to. So if you come over here to challenge I, I'm not going to get into no fist fight and no wrestling with you. But with that said, family, this morning is crunch morning. And I have to talk about this issue, you know. And the reason why I go and talk about this issue is because I wear locks on my head and I know why I wear it. I know what I believe in and I know which way I am treading on this planet. And let me tell you something. When I look and I see everybody now wearing locks. And they don't even understand the persecution. They don't understand what happened. To all Rastafari elders and the history. Or let me in let, let me correct that and not say the history. Let me say the story behind wearing these locks. A lot of us are Jamaicans and we don't know. We don't know these things. That in 1963, we had a day called Bad Friday. And this was the 11th of April, 1963. You see, we just passed over the Easter tide. A lot of people came on the channel and said, Happy Easter. I did not disrespect nobody. I accept the blessing. And I also accept that you took the time out to say, Happy Easter. But I don't celebrate Easter. I don't celebrate none of those holidays. None of those holidays that is not my holiday or holiday in my social socialization. I don't accept it. I don't celebrate them. But you send I a blessing, I'm going to be grateful. But in this Easter tide, to be honest, as Rastas, every time it takes us back to a place which was very dark in our Jamaican history. I know that this is not taught in schools because when I went to school in Jamaica, this was never taught in history. Never ever for a day taught in history. And it should be taught in schools because of what did happen. On the clock of Sir Alexander Bustamante, a, a prime minister, past prime minister of Jamaica, that is lauded and is considered to be one of our national heroes. And he, cre he, he committed one of the greatest crimes against humanity. Yes, he committed one of the greatest crimes against the most iconic community in Jamaica. And that is the Rastafari community. So in 1963, Sir Alexander Bustamante ordered that Rastas be brought in whether dead or alive. And this was no joke thing. Our elders had to take to the hills, take to the bush. They could not be seen in towns and in no kind of built up area in a Jamaica. Them used to call Rasta black heart man. And say Rasta are some dreadful looking people. 
because Rasta decided that they are not going to be a part of the system and they are going to have their own cultural expression. They are going to look a sort of way how them choose to look and that is in the natural state by growing them ear naturally. Don't use no scissors and comb and the society didn't like it because it didn't fit the status quo. So Rastas were tracked down and under this government, himself it bring them in dead or alive. Now tell me now people. Because you choose to live your life a certain kind of way. You should be dead. You should be imprisoned. You should be beaten. You should be tortured. You should be pulled like an animal with rope. And bring you down a 14. Down a man to go be. That is what that government said you know. Him said draw them. Bring them in dead or alive. Care them come a 14. Now all who can go a 14 for go a bogey. And for those of you who come from down a mobby side, Bogil down there a cemetery. Bogil at the time was a cemetery. So is either we're going to bring you in, beaten, tortured, or we want to see you stiff stone dead. That is what Alexander Bustamante said. So these are the atrocities and these are the inhumane treatment. These are the sort of barbarism that Rasta face in Jamaica. Yes, so we see him Jamaica. We well, you see a lot of Rasta now and I talk about, yeah, every single great iconic reggae artist out of Jamaica just look good. See there now? They have Bojo and them and lift him up on high pedestal way above sea level. And what? Bojo a Rasta. The greatest legendary iconic reggae artist out of Jamaica that Jamaica people lord. Is a Rasta man. Is Bob Marley. You see, you see where I'm going with this. So this iconic community was victimized under this government on the same Friday day. One you call Good Friday, a bad Friday for Rasta. 11th of April 1963, Rasta got through atrocities. Rasta got through hell in a Jamaica. So when you see Rasta, uh, me, I'm not talking about dreadhead people. I'm not talking about people who twine up them hair and a beautify and a style up. And I want when I come on social media, nobody come tell me about my hair, look how we are, whatever. I'm going to share this with you. You know, you know one time I had an encounter on social media and I remember going to a dance hall page. And because a certain person who follow a certain dance hall artist wanted to be rude to me. You know what them said to me? Along about your business like a dirty head dread girl. So that has not changed really in our society. But it's just because they can't beat Rasta. They have to join Rasta. Because they come to realize that Rasta sight up the things them with them never sight up for how long. Rasta know the liberty. Rasta I uphold it. Rasta telling about organic eating. Way of life. Rasta telling about health is wealth. I don't know. Rasta telling a long time say. Forget about ear relax. And forget about all them chemicals in on your ear. Natural is the way. And I know everybody I come and I wake up and I see the light. So I am talking my talk this morning. Because me know Rasta persecution. And I am healing my elders this morning. I am giving thanks for those elders who paved the way so I can walk with locks and maid and other people who are not even rasters can wear dreads. And the same dreads is derived from the term of being dread and terrible because them say rasta used to look terrible. Look how they look awful and terrible. Coop on their hair on their head. Go get grass back and cut it off. You think a little hell that got through, got through persecution? You think a little hell that got through cross backlash, shave off here? You, you, know, you know how painful that is? Take Rasta, lock up Rasta, send Rasta to jail, and once you go to jail, Rasta locks off a cut. You think a scissors them use cut it? A grass back them use. A them something that we have come from family. We don't need to know the story. We don't need to know the root. We don't need to know the journey. And when you see Rasta with them glory, 
We don't need to overstand say so never come so so so. So me come this man and me a sound my sound because I've been inspired to sound the sound. And I sound off my sound, you know. And after I sound off my sound, I'm going to drop the documentary for you. Because I want you to hear the testimonies. I want you to hear what really I'm to Rasta in a Jamaica on the clock of Alexander Bustamante. I do not hear that man as no hero. And when I say that I don't want nobody come over here, come tell me about this or tell me about that. That is my personal view. That is how I feel about the situation. And that is what I say. So you come with your point of view. I respect that. But don't come over here and think so you can argue with I because I say that. Me know and me see. And up to this day, Rasta still are fighting for reparation for what happened to them. None of them were injured, physically injured. A lot of elders were physically injured under this dark part in our history. A lot of them were damaged, victimized, not to mention the emotional scars that Rasta got through. The degradation that Rasta got through. Them buck down Rasta for Rasta house of a lick down. Rasta fi got bush go live. Rasta no nobody round here. We no want to see them. And up to this day, it took the government of Jamaica only in a 2017. Just where they, because we in a 2019 now. From 1963 to 2017, it took the Jamaican government to come and apologize to Rasta and say, you know, what was done to Rasta was totally wrong. And I'm going to call it a crime against humanity. A crime against the most iconic group out of Jamaica. With that said, I'm going to leave this one here so this man in family. You know, this channel is nothing but high frequency and high vibration. But you know that when I come to sound my sound, it is crunch time, a crunch moment. And I go off a certain direction on this channel. When I get directions to sound my sound, I come out here and I talk my talk. I'm going to follow up with this, with the video documentary of what happened to Rasta after the Coral Gardens massacre in 1963 in Jamaica, our island that we so love. Blessed love family and have an hopeful day. I'm out. Real Empress Yuda. Everybody is in fear, everybody is in a panic because we have been victimized. We have no, have not known what is going to happen to us. We are suffering. Yeah, man, the wickedest fight Rasta get in Jamaica was through the car guard thing.